sorry, that Achim's body was found lifeless from the rubble or under the rubble in Turkey in Hatay days after the earthquake struck. We're all hoping that he would make it out alive and play some more football to excite all of us. But that did not happen. He couldn't make it. His agent, Nana Setra, confirmed on Saturday that a true lifeless body had been found. And so quickly, it's been arranged, it's been put together, and his body is being sent down to Ghana so that um, we'll see what the next step is. I'm sure, um, as tradition demands, we'll see a funeral burial. We'll hear from the family and all of that. You can send in your, your messages if you have any on the WhatsApp number 0204 447 I'm not doing it alone. I have two colleagues of mine. First, City Sports Editor Benjamin Niketia is here and Sports Analyst Jerome Autry. Gentlemen, good evening and quite sad, quite sad. Ah. <clears throat> we don't have to be smiling, but yeah. I mean, it is. Well, well, we'll, we'll get to all the conversations. We'll talk about Christian Achim as we know him, as we remember him. Mm -hmm. We'll also be getting tributes from uh, various clubs. Yesterday, clubs like Chelsea, Bournemouth, Newcastle, all the clubs that uh, Achu played for, had a relationship with at a point in his career. All of them shared their, their deepest condolences, fans applauded. We'll get to all of that a little um, later on. Um, we'll be getting to the Kotoka International Airport in a bit to speak to my colleague Fred, who is on the ground, and he's a man there keeping an eye on everything that's happening there. Like I said, the military is receiving Christian Achu's body, and they are doing it as part of their own special procedure. They call it a reception. So they are receiving the body uh, from Turkey, and then we'll see what will unfold in coming days. So as soon as we have the all clear to talk to Fred Duho, we'll be doing that. But let me take initial thoughts from Benjamin and Jerome. Guys, yesterday was, nobody expected our Saturday to start the way it did, but I guess that's life. Nana Seche, um, I choose age, yeah. confirmed what all of us had been dreading. Well, unfortunately, it was the first thing I woke up to. Um, when I woke up, one of the things I do is I will do like a quick prayer and then I'll check my phone to see if I've received any calls. Um, I, I noticed quite a lot of notifications on my social media and so I headed right there and then I noticed that our true was trending. And then the first thing I saw was somebody had tweeted, I hope this actual news is not true. <laughs> and so in my mind, there's a little bit of denial in there. I'm like, I'm, I was hoping that he would be one of the stories of people who had been found 100 and something hours after um, the tragedy struck. But at that point, you know, reality begins to dawn on you a little. And so uh, for me, I, 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 I was down the whole morning. But you know how this job is. You know, you need to get right on uh, with the work as soon as these things happen. And so I immediately started to uh, get into the process of trying to verify the news and eventually turned out that, yes, this was actually true. And so um, that's the situation we're faced with. I, I was really sad. I mean, I tried calling a few of his colleagues, um, getting to a few other people just to verify, to know if this was true or not before we could run with it. And so it, it was a really hectic morning, I mean, for all of yeah. us in this particular space, you know, verifying news, trying to get artwork done, trying to get stories done. Mm. And it's always very hard when you relate with a person in a certain type of manner and you have to make news out of it. It's always really, really difficult and very complicated. But um, I'm, I'm trying my best to stay as positive as I can about everything. It's not, it's not always easy. You, you feel like you, you've hit like a new space of positivity. And then I see like a rush of <coughs> articles. I see images. I see like videos of him singing and just being a really great person. And you just realized how big a loss this is. Mm. Jerome. How, well, how did you take the news? I don't know where you were. I, I was driving. I was, I was going to a funeral at the Kropon. Okay. And I had a call from Nigeria. I mean, this is, this is the interesting part. So a Nigerian TV station had wanted to speak to me mm -hmm. when uh, he was found. And I told them where I was, we couldn't talk. Okay. So maybe if we can reschedule it. Then hours later, the news was that even the, 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 the point about he being alive and being yeah. hospitalized wasn't true. Yeah. So then I sent a message to the Nigerians and told them, look, I cannot even speak because it is turning out that the information you gave me is false. So this lady had been checking to find out, I mean, you are in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we in Nigeria are not hearing that maybe you know? Mm -hmm. I kept telling them, well, it's the same old thing. Only for her to yesterday morning 
send me that. Now, Jerome, the news has been confirmed. Can we speak? I said, wow, how? <laughs> I don't know. So you wait. Let me check. Yeah. And then we will, we will talk. I packed somewhere, went through Twitter especially, and everybody was talking about yeah. it. To be, to be frank with you, I was, I, was, I was sad, but it wasn't the circumstances of, I, I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Being involved in an earthquake of this magnitude, yeah. being looked for, being searched over the course of Two 11, weeks. 10 days, uh, I mean 11, 12 days, yeah. not hearing anything, I felt that there was a remote chance of a survival, very remote. So when the news came out, as, as painful as it was, yeah. it didn't come to me as a surprise. Mm. Well, for, for those who um, discovered the news later, it, it, it was Saturday morning and it had been making the rounds all over because it came from his agent, and then the club spoke, and then you had the Ghanaian diplomatic mission in Turkey also confirming everything, and that was really, that was really, really a sad spot for all of us, those who were hoping that things would turn out well in terms of Christian Achu and his making it alive out of that very tragic episode in Turkey. Let's get to uh, my colleague Fredo. He's at the Kotoka International Airport. He's our man on the field trying to keep an eye as to whatever is happening there. So let's find out what exactly is going on at the airport. Fred, if you can hear me, good evening and uh, welcome. Um, can you just give us an update on what's been happening at the airport and what is ha happening now as we speak? All right, good evening and welcome to the Kutka International Airport where we bring you live coverage. Week that occurred in Turkey. But I must say that before I give you any further updates, um, yesterday we received information or we gathered reports that indicated that uh, the body was supposed to arrive yesterday. But uh, I came to the Kotka International Airport to verify if indeed that report was true. And when I came, in actual fact, reports suggest that. Um, he was supposed to arrive uh, as, uh, at the airport around 8 p.m. That is normally when the Turkish airlines normally come through to the Kotka International Airport. But that was not the case. The date had uh, rather been rescheduled to, to um, this particular um, airport. But I must put on record that uh, that particular news we put out there, in actual fact, it turned out that today is really the day that they are expecting uh, the footballer's body here at the Kutuka International Airport. Now, I can proceed to give you updates to the effect that the military is here, as directed by the President of the Republic of Ghana, in the according to the necessary uh, protocol or the standards. And so we are currently at the Kotoka International Airport Terminal 2, specifically the VIP session, where he is supposed to land, we understand, in the next five minutes. So we are hoping that very soon we are on the tarmac, and this particular place has been cordoned off uh, by the military, not to allow the media to go beyond this particular location. But I can say that the military are here in their numbers and state officials and uh, for that matter the government officials are here. I have seen personally the information minister, the Honorable Kojo Oponkuma, who is here coordinating affairs and standing uh, right to my left somewhere there waiting patiently to receive the body and the family of Christian Achu. And again, as we speak, the family of Christina Chu that we met uh, when we came to the airport are also uh, in the VIP section waiting patiently to be called to receive their beloved son. And we understand uh, this is someone who is a breadwinner to many. And for that matter, uh, they are all here to show their love. We've seen a group of ladies who are clad in the Ghana flag, red 
yellow and green colors with the Ghana Black Star right on their shirt, uh, indicating that they are supporters of a sort. Uh, to, they are basically here to throw their support and show solidarity to Christian Achu and the family for that matter. So in your shot currently, right at the entrance over the, the VIP section, you would see the information minister, other dignitaries who are clad in black apparel, waiting patiently to receive the body, which we understand would land here at the Kotoka International Airport in some few minutes to come. Um, have you seen any officials of the Ghana Football Association there? Do you find any members of the larger football fraternity also at the airport? None that I know of. I mean, those that I can publicly identify, I have not seen any of them yet. But I believe some of them are around, just that they've not really caught my eye. So there are people from the football fraternity who are here. I am turning ten, ten basically just to see if indeed the aircraft has landed. But uh, that place is quite dark. Until it gets closer, that is when I'll be able to support it. But to your question again, uh, some football fanatics are here. Some people who are relatives, like I mentioned earlier, are present to welcome the family uh, of Christian. Mm. All right, we'll, we'll see if we can get to Fred Duho again or connect to him. Um, he's at the Kotoka International Airport. He's a man there, and he's keeping an eye on... Um, Happenings, like he said, the body would arrive very. The body will arrive very, very soon, and we wait to see what the protocols will be. So, for those who do not know, a bit of context: the president, His Excellency Nana Adodankwe Kofadu, mentioned that the military would receive the body and then apply all their protocols in relation to um, all of that. We see what it will mean for the larger event, whether or not the state will be handling it or it will be the family. But as we do know, the military is at the airport and they will be receiving the body of the late Christian Achu, who died in uh, the earthquake that struck Qatar in Turkey um, a few weeks ago. Guys, so at least we do know that that's uh, go going to happen. Just, just before, though, I mean, just a quick note. Like Fred said, it's important that we re reiterate this point on the news that was going around the body would arrive um, yesterday. It, the body is arriving tonight, so um, apologies for that. The, the reports that we got stated that the body would arrive yesterday and so we followed up it turned out well that was not the case national airport in a few minutes i think we have fred Duo back on the line let's get a concluding thoughts from him fred um thank you for joining us we had a bit of a hitch you were telling us um, about the football fans and others who were there, especially those from the larger footballing family who were also there to express their love and support to um, the late Christian Achu and his family. Sorry, I was about to announce to you that we just received the vice president in person of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who arrived here at the VIP section to also take part in this brief ceremony to welcome the body of Christian Achu. So that is the latest update I can give you, that the vice president just came in with his entourage, and he was welcomed by the information minister, uh, the Honorable Kojo Ponkuma, and uh, he they walked into the room or the VIP uh, section where they are going to have a brief discussion before they walk out to uh, receive the family and the entourage that may be arriving soon from Turkey. Thank you so, so much. We'll get back to you um, as and when newer things happen at the Kotoka International Airport. This is City TV, and we are giving you the live coverage of the arrival of the remains of Christian Achu, a Ghanaian professional footballer, ex Black Stars player who died in Turkey as a result of that devastating earthquake that struck. 30,000 or 30 plus thousand people have been confirmed dead. I'm sure the numbers are staggering. The damage is huge and it's affected everybody, including one of our own, Christian Achu, who got caught up in that episode. This is City TV and we are giving the live coverage of the arrival of Christian Achu's body from Turkey to Ghana.
Welcome back. This is City TV, and we are giving you the live coverage of the arrival of the body of Christian Achu from Turkey. That's where he played last for Hatay Sport when the earthquake struck. And unfortunately, uh, you know, in spite of all our prayers and hopes and greatest wishes, his lifeless body was discovered on Saturday, and the body is being flown to Ghana um, tonight. It will arrive very soon. We'll get back to the airport as and when we do have updates. Like I said, my other colleague, Charles Kumi, he is at the family house of the late Christian Achu. We'll get to him as and when um, there are updates there as well. Gentlemen, so we've heard from Fred. It looks like um, things are proceeding steadily at the airport. There are some government officials there. He says he's yet to see somebody he can recognize from the sporting fraternity, i.e. Yeah. members of the GFA. I'm, I'm sure they are there. I'm sure yeah. they are doing their bit. If they do not make it, that's, that would be quite unfortunate. But I I'm mean, sure they are there. I honestly expected to have seen more presence in the, from the FA in all of this. Since the, the passing, I think they, they, they've run a few updates on their, their social yes. media handles, but I, I expected that by now there would have been maybe a proper statement acknowledging um, the, the, the passing away of Christian Nacho and also for them to have basically played a more prominent role in this because if anybody was closer to Achu on the national level, it was the people at the FA. I mean, throughout his time in the national team, if you remember, Achu didn't play much of his football down in this country, except if you are counting the final academy and uh, his spell with Cheetah mm -hmm. FC. But uh, for most part, all, all of his, um, all of like Ghanaians know him through his exploits to the national team. And so I, I, I don't think it's too late. I, I think they, they definitely have plans. I mean, um, I want to give them the benefits of the doubt, but we need to, we need to feel the presence of the FA in this. They, okay. they need to be doing their own thing with regards okay. to the family and everything. All right, well, I'll come back to my guests for some more thoughts. On your screens, uh, you see the Turkish airline aircraft carrying the body of Christian Achu. It set off hours ago from Turkey. It's finally landed at the Kutuka International Airport. We will be telling you or be giving you updates on what exactly will be happening. Like I said, the president of the land, Manel Kufadu, His Excellency, mentioned that the military will take charge. They will receive the body and they will apply all their standards, all their protocols, all the things they do in relation to specific things like this. They are the well-trained people. They know what exactly they need to do from this point onward. So we'll be giving you updates on that. But on your screen, there's a Turkish Airlines flight that has just landed with the body of Christian Achu. Our colleague Fredo is at the airport, the Kosovo International Airport, and he's back on the line. Fred, um, if you can hear me on our screens, we do see that the, uh, f um, the plane has landed, but what exactly is happening on the ground? And um, has any of the protocols been, uh, been activated? What exactly is going on there now that the flight has landed? Okay, we'll, we'll get to Fred in a bit there. Jerome, so it looks like um, the flight has landed. I'm sure from this point onwards, we'll see what exactly the military will be, will be doing. The, the good news is that the aircraft has landed. The bad news is that uh, he's not coming to us alive. <laughs> but, yes. um, I mean, as, as painful as it is, we have to accept it and see uh, okay. what will happen. All right, Jerome, I'll, I'll come to you for more thoughts. But let's go to Fred Duho. Fred Duho is on the ground. He's a reporter at the airport. Fred, we see that the, the, craft, the aircraft has arrived, but what exactly are the other actions that are taking place. What's the military doing now as they start the process of receiving the body from uh, the Turkish Airlines aircraft? All right, so I want to uh, let you know that the Vice President and his entourage, they've uh, now come out of the VIP lounge uh, with the Turkish ambassador and other very important dignitaries that are present here to receive the body of Christian Achu. And then in our short again, we have the heads that is positioned uh, at a very advantageous place to move the body, which is being guarded by the military. Then I will now take you to where the aircraft is. It, lasted, it landed about some few minutes ago, and in your shot is the Turkish airline that just arrived some few minutes uh, when we, we, we went off. So uh, currently I can say that the place... The relatives are here waiting. The vice president is also present with other government um, officials. Then we have the military presence. We have the policemen also on standby. And the media, 
they are here in their numbers just to give coverage to the football legend Christian Al Achu who passed in the um, tragic uh, earthquake that actually struck uh, Turkey and um, Syria some few weeks ago. And don't forget, tomorrow would be exactly two weeks when the unfortunate incident occurred in Turkey. The situation here is that people are grieving, or Ghanaians generally are united in grief, and we are all gathered here uh, with government officials, uh, diplomats from the Turkey embassy here in Accra, and other um, dignitaries, football fanatics, uh, and all that stakeholders are present here to welcome uh, the dignitaries from Turkey and other, um, I would say, uh, very important personalities that are currently present to welcome and receive the body of Christian Achu. the protocols or the procedures related to the reception of the body from Turkey. So that was our, our colleague Fred Duho, my colleague Fred Duho, he's at the Kosokan International Airport. He's our man there, so we'll be getting to him every now and again when there are updates on that particular um, event. Jerome, you are making a point that I choose coming back. Yeah, not... that's, that's, the, that's a sad aspect, yes. but it's good the plane has come. Uh, you were asking about the presence of the FA. If anything at all, we should have the general secretary. If not for anything at all, we should have the general secretary, the FA president himself. I'm, 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 I'm told he is. I'm told he's there. Yeah. The FA general secretary. I, I guess in in one of the shops, I think I saw the, it, the general yes, secretary. Yes, yes. So he's there. That's wonderful. It, it, it would have been surprising if yeah. you don't have yes, such yes. such figures there. But just like uh, Fred was saying. It is possible he has not seen them. Yes, it's but they are, they are, they are there. Like I'm, I've just I been mean, told this, by my producers that yes, Prosper Harris yeah. and I is there. Like you said, yes. yeah, I think we picked him up from this. The show. This, this is supposed to be a football event, yeah. and definitely you find uh, football people there. It is not a surprise that the politicians are also there because definitely are true. More or less, now it's a, a state. A state yep. property, yep. you know, yep. and it's gone beyond football. Exactly, yeah. and, so, and and it's important we have uh, the vice president. I mean, some top, top, top Official, politicians yeah. there to make sure that the right things are done. I I would love to see what happens from here. I mean, we have been given some information that once the military, it's 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 taking control of affairs in terms of receiving the body, it means we'll be given a state barrier. I, mm -hmm. I read the government statement. I didn't see anything like that. Yeah. But if that is what it will be, I think it will be good. Because just like Fred was saying, we are united in grief, you know. And I don't know what goes into deciding who to give. Who, who the gets these, yes, yeah. these? But these. just for the fact that I the mean, whole the military, military yeah, to be receiving him, I think it's a big indicator. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens from this point onwards. But I think like we've all said, once the military has been brought in, mm -hmm. it just tells you that, the state is very interested. Yeah. For the vice president to be the there, vice president actually is a big there. deal. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a big deal. You know, we, we, we'll be getting updates there, but guys, all of us around this table knew Achu in a certain way. We yeah. all knew him as a member of the Black Stars. We knew him as a professional footballer. So all of us dealt with him at mm -hmm. that level, mm -hmm. you know, speaking about his career, football, yeah. those kinds of things. Let's talk about some of our fondest memories of, of Christian Achu, and we'll, maybe we'll get to play the bio, but... Fondest realm. What are some you know, of your fondest I, memories? I, I personally never spoke with him. Oh, okay. It was only yesterday morning mm -hmm. that my wife told me she spoke with, with him. And I, I was asking her, you, you don't do football. How come you spoke? <laughs> and then she said uh, there was a time she visited a family friend. And I think it was right after the AFCON 2015 where he had gone to, I mean, excel yeah. and mm -hmm. did so well. And she came to this family, uh, he came to this family friend holding a Ghana flag, and my wife was there. My wife asked for it. So my wife was saying, look, this guy, I never met him. I never saw him until that moment. Mm -hmm. That moment when I asked for the flag, he gave it to me, even without saying anything. He just smiled and handed it over. He must have been a nice guy. I said, yeah. I mean, everybody is saying that about him. That plus other things I know of him, 
how he was supporting the prisons. Yes. In fact, one of the things that I read, I mean, I've read in tributes to him, which struck me so well, was about that Nigerian uh, comedian, yes. or, or is it actor, yeah. mm -hmm. who has been talking about how, and I, and I was like, wow. Yeah. This guy, I mean, people talk about him as, as being generous, as being kind. Mm -hmm. But if he could go to this level, then truly, 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 mm -hmm. he was kind. And it is from that perspective that I have seen him. Okay. I didn't really get to didn't know really him. Get to interact yeah, but I mean, after, after his death, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the stories I've heard really mm -hmm. confirms the fact that he was But I'll, I'll get to you for a second. Uh, for our viewers, um, if you can see behind us you know the the that that what you see that encasing or all of that is um, that's what contains a true body so it is true for those who were still you know hmm. kind of that well that is that is what you see there the body has arrived and i'm sure the military will activate all their protocols all the things they do when they are asked to receive a body on behalf of the state or on behalf of whoever it is and the president gave that directive so you know, we will be seeing all of that happen. You see a shot of the dignitaries that have all, you know, lined up at the airport. I'm sure the family, the family is there, we do know. I'm sure the dignitaries will meet the family and all. And very soon the military will be receiving the body of Christian Achu as directed by the president. But let's, let's talk about your, your experience of Christian Achu, whether from afar or whether it was up close and, and personal. Well, I, I tried to get in touch with him a few times. I was trying to get him to get on the tracker. Um, it was a little complicated, but eventually it never happened. I'm, I'm pretty sorry that it didn't happen. I would have loved to have, to have had him on, but I'm, I've, I've, I met him a couple of times. Um, never really spoke at length, but he was always a really nice guy, you know, willing to take a quick picture, willing to listen to a quick word, never too much in a hurry. And that's, that's how I feel about him. And for, for most people, I, I think I was introduced to Christian Atu in the same way most Ghanaians were introduced to him. So 2012, out of nowhere, yeah, this guy just burst yeah. onto the scene. And then we hear later that he was discovered by Kwesi Apia. And I, I, I say this because, I, like I mentioned before, he didn't play very much on the local scene. Final yeah. Academy, after that, he was out of the country. And, he played a bit for Wafa. Yeah, for Wafa. Then, after, after that, he was just out of the country. So, FC, actually, that was yeah, quite early. In yeah, Colts. Yeah. yeah. And, and so... It, it was it was always me thinking about this tiny guy, Achu Messi, you yeah. know that kind of thing. That, we, we always used to make fun of that, that that type of thing. I remember looking at him one point, like you know, this guy is actually like the brightest spot in our team right now. There came a time where our team lacked creativity, our team lacked flair, and he was just the one guy who made us look flowery. You know, he he, he gave life to our team, and so. It's, it's always really hard looking back on his career. I, I personally felt like on the footballing side of things, he didn't um, fulfill his full potential. I, I, thought, I thought he had a little more in the tank. I didn't think that at 31 he'd be playing for Hatay Sport. I thought he would have more to it. But you should also remember that Atu suffered a lot of injuries. He suffered an ACL. I think he suffered another Achilles injury or something deadly like that. And so for him to have actually even patched up his career to have still been playing in the Turkish Super League at that point, having gone through all he had been through, it just gives you a sense of his fighting spirit. I remember at a point when things weren't going well at Newcastle, they wanted to move him on. He said he was confident in staying back to fight for a place. And I, I listened to Rafa Benitez um, speak about two yesterday, and the good thing is that Rafa doesn't say a lot about yeah, his Rafa former Benitez players. Is not, Rafa Benitez not, doesn't, not, doesn't have a good relationship. Manager, yeah. He doesn't have a good relationship with most of most his former, of his former players. players. And so yeah. for him to say that he was texting with Atu literally what, two weeks or three weeks before the incident happened, it just gives you a sense of how much of a special person Atu was in terms of okay. building relationships with people. Okay, Let, let's get back to our colleague Fred Duho, who's at the Kotika International Airport. He's there on the ground observing uh, the military receiving the body of Christian Achu that has arrived in Ghana from Turkey. Um, Fred, uh, if you can hear me, what exactly is happening on our screens? We do see that the body has arrived, but on the ground, what exactly is happening? Um, have any of the protocols been activated? What's the military doing? How are the dignitaries responding to all that is happening there at the airport? Nathan, I want to start with the Reverend Father and the Malam. 
uh, who are on standby basically to say prayers uh, as their mission uh, for the evening. But in some few minutes ago, the um, family and those who accompany the body of Christina Chu to uh, Ghana went to greet the vice president and government officials who are present here to receive them. So in your short, you can see the vice president and some relatives who came with the body of Christian Achu. They shook hands, uh, exchanged pleasantries, and then they moved to now stand closer to those who are already in your short. Now, some few minutes ago, the body was taken out of the aircraft, and so far we can see military men on parade waiting for the next command to initiate Um, something I would want to describe as containers because we've not seen the content yet. We don't really know what is in there. So I am quite careful not to conclude. But we can see that the two containers right at the tail end of the aircraft, as you can see in your shot, we are believing that is the corp that was taken out of um, the body, uh, the, out of the aircraft, sorry. So as we speak, the military is waiting to initiate action, organize a parade, and what I am describing to you, three of them actually, even I can count four now, being moved by the um, vehicle, and we want to believe that is not it because they look the same. I don't really want to conclude yet. We don't want to believe if that is uh, some other packages or content that the aircraft came with. But we can see that the aircraft keep bringing more and more of those cartons or containers from the aircraft and from the basin for that matter. So we are patiently waiting, but we've seen that the military are on guard. They are waiting patiently to initiate action and receive the body as well as the vice president who is here to kick start the formal processes and a brief ceremony will be held here. Okay. All right. Fred, thank you so, so much. We'll, be, we'll get back to you if there are more updates. And for our viewers uh, and those who are following, um, Ghana's ambassador to Turkey, Her, Ex Her Excellency, uh, Madame Francisca Shiti Odunson, is also there. So she accompanied, um, she was on the flight that brought the body from Turkey to Ghana. I don't know how many people saw her, but she's in the crowd, and I can confirm that. So, hmm. well, quite, quite tough. It's, a, it's just a harrowing moment for the family, um, having to observe all of this. I believe his brother uh, traveled and spent time with NASA Trace agents while they tried to look for him, and so he would have followed, I mean, the entire process of trying to get him out of the rubble, trying to embalm the body to and plane and then down to Ghana must be really tough for that. I think that we should all as a people remember the family in these times. Um, I know that this, is, this has taken on a national face all of a sudden, but there's also a thin line between invading the privacy of a family in times like that this and allowing them enough space. I've wondered why we we'll do this to ourselves. You know, the news is out there. Everybody knows yeah. he couldn't make it. What is the point about trying to trying put... to? And you know, some of the first pictures that were sent, I didn't even know mm -hmm. that was actually somewhere in the rubble. Someone had, I think, there was a drawing of a yeah. green arrow yeah. pointing to the body. The moment I saw it, look, I deleted it yeah. because I couldn't look at it yeah. twice. In the evening, I even got upset with a friend who Probably sent, sent me uh, some boxes being loaded onto a cargo plane or the base, oh, the base of an aeroplane, and he was telling me that was Achu's body. And the first question I asked him is, and so what? What should I do with this? Yeah, exactly. I mean, what should I do with this? Imagine if you are Achu's family and you see this. It mm -hmm. was really, you are, really you are grieving. You are going through yeah. a very difficult moment trying to not to even accept that this is true yeah and then things like this are splashed on, on onto your phone or sent i mean 
posted on social media. And let me make this point. Fortunately, some of our colleagues who posted these things on their handles have deleted them. But I saw media colleagues, I will not mention names here, but I yeah. saw media colleagues, and one media house published these pictures. And I was asking myself, do we have any respect at all for, <laughs> was for, their, for the sensibility of, 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 of our choose family? We need not do these things in times like this. You, you, yes, the whole thing is painful. Everybody is depressed. I don't know any media person, even those who don't like football, yeah. those who don't know Achu and who he was, yes. the club he played for and all that, are all feeling like something has, I mean, something heavy has befallen them. Mm -hmm. It goes to tell you that it is not just about he being a football person. He's first of all a human being. And so, if you are posting pictures of his dead body or stuff like that, just put yourself in the shoes of, yeah. I mean, his family members. And ask yourself whether, if it were your relative, that we have done with the We're, the we're, we're in, in very, very poor taste. Okay. I hope that people will learn to comport themselves better in these circumstances. This is still City TV. You are watching our live coverage of the reception. Uh, being done by the military uh, of Christian Achu's body has arrived in Ghana from Turkey and uh, the military is taking charge as directed by the president of the land, His Excellency Nana Adudankwe Kofado in a statement. And so the military is there activating all the protocols, activating all the things they do, applying all the standards in terms of how they receive bodies and all of that. So we'll be seeing uh, the military, you know, taking charge and all. Um, in your shot, you can see a woman, uh, f uh, you know, obviously a fan of football, clad in the national colors, weeping, wailing, crying, because she's as sad as everybody is, you know, and, and she's wailing and crying. It is a very, very, very sad episode. My colleagues, Charles Owusu Kumi and Fred Duho, are out on the field. Charles Kumi. <laughs> Charles Kumi is at the, is at the uh, family house. And then we have Fred Duo, who's at the airport. And in, your, and in your shot, you see this woman who's crying and wailing. Let's get back to the airport and let's speak to Fred Duho. He is there. He's our man on the ground following everything that's happening at the airport. Fred, um, thank you so much for joining us once again. What exactly is happening there? Has there, in, has there been any new uh, events? Um, what is the military up to and what are the dignitaries doing even as they await uh, all the things that the military will be doing? Nathan is quite some uh, sad spectacle to behold here, where there is this woman here wailing, crying, and basically not believing that, in fact, the body of uh, Christian Achu has been brought to Ghana. Um, we all thought probably the news we heard um, would probably be false at the end of the day, but that is not the case. Um, with all the display of uh, the military and that of government officials here, we should say that indeed the news we all heard about Achu's passing is true. But here at the airport, we've seen that almost everyone here is sad and people are just quite moody. The, the vice president as well, other government officials and even the military, nobody is smiling here. Uh, we are only waiting for the military to initiate their moves and then we can follow. But like I mentioned earlier on, we have the priest uh, and the imam, one of the imams from the military who are currently here with the Turkey ambassador to Ghana. We have the vice president. You can even see some of them folding their hands. That is the information minister on the screens, and almost all of them are just um, tapped. So the situation here is such that almost everyone here is waiting patiently for the military to continue with their protocols as directed by the president. But I think at this juncture, I want us to speak to some of the people present uh, to gauge their mood and to get some understanding as to why they are here and what they believe um, 
the situation is uh, how they've been related to the footballer over the period and then again as to what the, the, the so the woman who was actually crying hello ma hello good evening why are you crying it, it is it is obvious we are all here because of the professional footballer christina chu but how well do you know him how connected are you to him meaning because of support we knew and it's not been the match you could program me i need you could stay doing why and i do your bobo livia those in here because i do was in my chain and you'll be an yes sir Ranuakumapai, <laughs> Siciano, yes, he said, Omudi, anybody now, but Ghana, and uh, uh, they will start the performance of these rights and everything to bury him as supporters union. What plans do you have for him? As you said, yeah, they know him for no. Well, Nathan, so that is one of the supporters or a member of the Supporters Union of Ghana who actually told us briefly that it is quite painful for the uh, Supporters Union to lose such a person, uh, an illustrious son of the land, someone who has really paid his due to this country and he's been of immense support to the Supporters Union. For that matter, losing him has been a very big blow to them as an association but they are believing that uh, probably going forward as supporters union their leadership will decide on what uh, they do out the funeral rights and we have other people here hello sir are, you are a journalist right yes, of course. Uh, well so well, as a journalist well, probably you also follow football how well do you know christian Achu? i'm not just a journalist i'm a sports journalist um it's, it's a sad scene you know we knew Achu at a younger age. We started watching his videos. He was the, he was the Messi that we all know. We thought he was the Messi of Ghana because when he's on the ball, we all thought this is the player to take Ghana to wherever we want to go. In 2015, if you watch the Afcon, he won the Afcon best player. He won the goal of the tournament. We saw that his curling goal, then straight away to Europe. We saw his exploit in Europe. At Newcastle, when Newcastle went to relegation, he's the one who brought Newcastle back to the Premier League. He's, um, he's coordinating with his players. Even yesterday, Rafa Benitez was giving an interview on Sky, uh, Sky Sports. He talked about his relationship with the player. Actually, he's not just a footballer. His heart for the poor, for the needy, is something that everybody is, uh, is, is, everybody is devastated about his death because there is someone that, on the field of play, is very calm, is very humble. Outside the football play, is very, very supportive to the community. See what he's doing for prison, see what he's doing for the young people. Sometimes he brings in boots, he brings in shingar to just see to that because he knows the beginning, he knows the foundation. When um, the CEO of Chita FC, Abdiate, got him, he was a young chap and Abdiate groomed him. So he knows the, the grassroots football. Actually, has been through a whole lot from um, from a slow move to Real Ave to Porto to Chelsea to Newcastle to Bournemouth to Everton. This is a player that is well known. We also is exploit in the 2014 FIFA World Cup when he, when Azerbaijan scored that goal against uh, Germany. That he will among goal. He actually is, is a loving person. Apart from football that we all know him for, he's exploit on the field. And his, his, his love for humanity is a whole lot. So, Achu is, is a national asset. Achu is the soil of, um, is the player that everybody is devastated about. Almost all the players. Even yesterday, saw that there is busy with a one minute silence, even for all the clubs, and even the GFA has also issued a one minute silence for all the clubs. So, after Achu, Achu remembered in Ghana football.
your full name and where you work? Uh, my name is George Entry. I work with the State Broadcaster GTV. Thank you very much. So you heard from one of the um, reporters who has also paid keen attention to the exploits of Christian Achu over the period. Uh, I have Gary Al Smith with me, one of the sports journalists. In uh, some uh, insight as to the life of uh, Christian Achu. Uh, welcome to City News. Thank you. Um, City News is home, obviously. Um, what can we say? Um, we would have wanted to be here and in better circumstances, but um, as faith would have it, we are here to welcome the remains of our brother. Some of us covered him at close quarters. Um, I was there before he came into the Black Stars. I didn't think I'll be here when his time ends like this. So uh, may he rest in peace. May all the good deeds that he did, that has been spoken of extensively, follow, follow him as well. Mm, but what has the Ghana Football Association missed or the football fraternity generally missed as far as this champ is concerned? I mean, first of all, his nickname was Ghana Messi. So if they say somebody is Ghana Messi, you understand, talent-wise. Yes. And uh, what do you call it? Um, as a humanitarian, I think we miss more. Not just as a footballer, but as a humanitarian. Uh, we miss more. Mentioning that he's a humanitarian, we understand off the pitch he's done much more to a number of people. And uh, most of the stories... What are some of the things you can remember? Him we, we, and the thing is that the stories we are hearing are even surprising us. Because... He always told the people he helped not to uh, mention it, you know, so, yeah. But unfortunately, I'm on TV live myself, so I have to go. That is good. Yeah. Thank you very much. So you heard from Gary Al Smith, one of the sports journalists in the country, and he's been sharing with us what he would probably miss about Christian Achu, and he's been described <laughs> as Ghana Messi. And giving him that title of Messi, that should tell you the... The, the kind of weight he carried around. Uh, so now the program is about to commence here at the airport terminal to VIP lounge where we are hoping to kickstart everything very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the VIP lounge to International Airport. This evening, we are here to we see the author is a, of our newest brother, friend, and former player of the Kish Club, a tire sport, and Ghana Black Stars, Christian Asu, who was a victim of a devastating earthquake that was prepared in Turkey on 6 February 2020. So, as you can see, the barrier. We got a, a quick interview um, with a woman who's absolutely gutted, really, at the loss, weeping and crying. She managed to string together a few words, just telling us how much supporters loved Christian Achu, who was a people's person, always was nice to them. We spoke to um, colleague journalist Gary Al Smith and others, you know, at the airport as well. As you can see, the ceremony is, is coming together. The military will soon do what they have to do to receive the body as directed by the president. Uh, His Excellency Nana Adedankwe Kufadu, the Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Baumia is there. Honorable Kojo Ponkroma, Minister of Information is there. Her Excellency Francisca Ashito Odonto, who is Ghana's Ambassador to Turkey, is also there. The military is there together with their High Command and several leading members of Ghanaian society are at the airport. Um, we'll be giving you updates. We'll take you back to the airport to um, get a full idea of the ceremony that is happening. But as you can see, the, 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 the body of Christian Achu draped or draped in uh, Ghanaian colors on the shoulders of um, the military. And they are carrying it military style, taking a slow march, taking their paces. But you can tell that they have now acted. They do their standards, their code of conduct in relation to how they receive a body that has been brought back to Ghana. Remember, they were asked by the, um, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, 
that's the president, <coughs> Nanado Dankwe Kufuado. And so they are following that directive and respecting their own order protocols, their way of receiving a body that has been brought back for them to handle as the first step of what is likely to be you know, a series of events that will culminate in the burial and, and final funeral rites of the late Christian Achu, former Black Stars player and former player of several teams, FC Porto, Chelsea, VTS Arnhem, Newcastle, Bournemouth, Everton, and went to Saudi Arabia. His last spot was in Hatay Sport at Turkey. Scored a dramatic late winner two Sundays ago. And hours later, he got caught up in an earthquake that has absolutely destroyed large parts of Turkey, large parts of Syria. 30 plus thousand people have died as a consequence. And we can see the military going through their paces, giving the casket the full military treatment as they lay it on um, that stand. And then we wait to see what the rest of this ceremony will portend um, at the Kotoka International Airport. I still have Benjamin in KTR City Sports Editor, Jerome Motri, sports journalist, sports analyst here with me. Uh, we'll get to some of the tributes um, done by some of the clubs Christian Achu played for. Some of them very moving, but they did respect his memory. Gentlemen, it was quite interesting to see how all of these clubs, Vitesse, Chelsea, whatever, remember Achu, whether he stayed with them for a long period or a short period, they remembered him in several ways and, and they did show him some love and respect as, as the news came in. I was, I was shocked at the, 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 the quickness with which these clubs managed to put these things together. I mean, um, Vitesse fans had an entire... God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers and be merciful to your son, the late Christian Achu, whom you have called from this life. Welcome him into the company of your saints, in the kingdom of your light and peace. Father, God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, Turn the darkness of death into the dawn of a new life. Show compassion to your people, especially the family of the late Christiana Chu and all Ghanaians in our sorrow. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us up from the darkness of this grief to the peace and light of your presence. And as always, we make our prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki wa middin. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'inu. Ihdina surat al-mustaqeen. Surat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. Qayr al-maktubi alayhim wa al-dhalin. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala. اللهم الطف بنا في تيسير كل أسير فإن تيسير العصير ليك يسير ونسأل التيسير في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم رب الناس أسب الباس شفيه وأنت الشافع لا شفاء إلا شفاء وكشفاء لا يقدر سقمة إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا لود we continue to pray for all sportsmen and women of our nation scattered in other parts of the world, especially our footballers. We commit them into your hands, and we ask that, Lord, as they lift up 
the flag of Ghana higher. In other disciplines of sports, you continue to protect and guide them. We pray, dear Lord, for all those who lost their lives in this calamity of earthquake. And we pray in the name of Christ Jesus that by your mercy, forgive our iniquities of the world, that these calamities will stay away from us. We pray, O oh God, that you receive the soul of your son, Christian Achu Chasam, whom you have called to your eternity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, the clergy. At this juncture, we will call on a rep from the Chassam family to give us his remarks. So we respectfully invite Nene Gabriel and Kuma Chassam to give his remarks from the family. On behalf of the Chassam family of Adan, and on my own behalf as, as the elder of the family, I'm giving thanks to the government of Ghana for the work they've done to bring the mortal remains of our dear son into Ghana. Also thank every Ghanaian that has contributed since this thing happened to today, we are grateful. We are saying, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you very much, Nene. Just from the Sporting Fraternity and the Ghana Football Association, I will humbly invite the General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association, Prosper Harrison Ado. So we, we heard the head of their family or the elder of the family who has given us uh, some gratitude or to the Your entire Ghanaian. Let's now move to the, the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Bahomia, Honorable Ministers of State hearing guarded, other dignitaries from government. I stand here on behalf of the football family both in Ghana receive the remains of our dear brother and for many our son from the football family we want to send our condolences to the immediate family the wife and children and indeed the entire Estena family. It is with great sadness that we stand here today. There lies a son of Ghana who brought a lot of joy to our hearts. Outside the field of play, he contributed and touched a lot of lives with his good deeds. And in the past few days, we've heard so many that he did without broadcasting it. And many are sharing testimonies about how he supported and helped them. We are reminded of the joy he brought to us. And on that note, the football family would stand shoulder to shoulder with family and indeed the government of Ghana so that together we'll give a befitting barrier to our star 
who brought joy to our hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you reps from the Ghana Football Association and the Football Facility. So you heard the General Secretary of the Ghana Football the Association, Association, Prosper Addo, who just spoke on behalf of the Ghana the Football Remarks Association. Before him was the elder of the Chwasam family, who is probably the head of the Christian Achus family. And the vice president is now about to address the gathering. Uh, let's take a listen to what he has to say. The Minister for Information, Minister for Sanitation, and water resources, the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the Deputy Minister for Sports, Ghana Ambassador to Turkey, and Turkey's Ambassador to Ghana, the Secretary, Gen Executive Secretary General of the Ghana Football Association and members of the GFA. Nene Chwasam, members of the Chwasam family, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the security forces, members of the press, and Ghanaians who are listening all over. It is a very sad day that we are here to receive the mortal remains of our brother our son, our husband, our uncle. The tragedy that occurred in Turkey about a week ago is one that was devastating. And we anxiously and nervously prayed that our brother Christian Achu would be found alive. We hoped against hope every day that passed. He was found. He was no more. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the President and the government to extend our sincere condolences to the Chwasam family, Achu's twin sister and his brother accompanied him from Turkey home. I'd like to extend my condolences to all of them and their entire family for this deep loss. I'd also like to extend my condolences to the footballing fraternity. Achu played for the Black Stars and he was much loved and we will sorely miss him. I'd like to extend my condolences to the Ghana Supporters Union and to all Ghanaians for this loss. It is a painful loss, a very painful one. But as the good Lord says in the good book, that from him we came and to him shall we return. We pray that the soul of Christian Achu rests in perfect peace in the bosom of the Lord. Thank you very much. And I would like to say that the state will be fully involved with the family in providing him a befitting barrier. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, so Gonpas is the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Dr. Mahmoud Pogna, who just addressed the gathering. And he is on behalf of the President of the Republic and the Ghana people, where he mentioned that uh, it was a sad news uh, in, in as much as we all prayed and hoped against hope, waiting patiently for some good news. It out that no more. But and to 
ensure that they play their part to ensure that their family. So let's go back to you. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My dear and sisters, so the clergy is performing some prayers. And uh, right the now, tears of our eyes and eyes in this difficult time through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. So the clergy just said uh, a brief prayer and um, before so him the, the vice president actually down. addressed the gathering briefly and they are inviting the burial party to take over and conduct their uh, brief ceremony. So the burial party is getting ready and marching to where the body is, where they would conduct the necessary uh, rites and then proceed to lift him probably to the hearse and then they would hear I want to believe we've come to the end of the brief ceremony here at the Terminal 2 VIP section at the Kotoka International Airport where the body, as you can see, of Christian Achu is being moved by military men to the hairs. And uh, the, I want to probably so re-emphasize what the vice president said. The vice president gave assurance to the family, the Trasam family of Achu, and he promised that the government will play his part to ensure that he receives a befitting burial. So he is now marching the body to the hearse, and the hearse has been opened now, where uh, he would be put into that particular uh, vehicle vehicle where uh, he will be driven probably to a destination we are yet to, to to ascertain. So you can see in your shot, this is the live coverage of the arrival of the body of Christian Achu who so they are matching him has been put into the hairs and it moves straight to its destination. We've come to the end of this brief event here at the VIP lounge of the Kotoka International Airport. Our dignitaries will take leave of us and after we all follow. May the soul of our dear brother Christian Achu rest in peace. So we've now come to the end of the brief ceremony here at the Kotoka International Airport where the body of Christian Achu was received by dignitaries from the government, uh, from the embassy here in Turkey, and other uh, relatives were present at the Kutuka International Airport Terminal 2 uh, VIP lounge, where uh, the military actually conducted a brief ceremony as directed by the President of the Republic of Ghana, and now he's been put into the hearse, and he will be driven to a location we are yet to establish. But we want to try as much as possible to see if we can speak to some of the dignitaries that are present. In hands and uh, greeting 
those who are present and uh, ensuring that he actually uh, beat them probably some last uh, by. But we want to approach and see if we can get some good shots from this end. So the, the Vice President and the Ambassador are currently having some tete-a-tete. -tete. They are shaking hands with the relatives who also came to the of Christian Atu, and they are just having some brief conversation. But I want to recap briefly what the Vice President has been saying in his short statement made here at the Kutuka International Airport. He first actually condole with the families, the people of Ghana, and everyone across the globe, especially the football fraternity as well, and the immediate family of Christian Achu, which is the Chuasam family, and uh, also giving them the assurance that government would not neglect them through the burial process, and uh, they would make sure they contribute their quota uh, to ensuring that Achu receive a befitting burial. So uh, the Vice President actually spoke on behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana, and I can mention some dignitaries present here. Uh, let's now get in touch with For me, it's even more personal than you can imagine. I've known Achu personally. I've known Achu as a young Dangme boy. And I've also known Achu when he arrived in London as a young boy to play for Chelsea. Achu was one person who was loving, very kind, and very respectful. And what's most importantly know that Achu loved the things of God. I had a personal relationship with him, more so because he even came from the Dangme background. Myself and Pastor Marlon, were people that really had a good relationship with him. And I think that I will say, let us respect the dignity of this funeral. Let us not take for granted anything that we do, especially our media fraternity. This is a very sensitive thing. Those of us who have even had relationship with the family and him, are true himself. I think we should be very mindful in the way we do it. But having said that, we as a people should learn to celebrate people while they are still alive, rather than paying tributes when they are long gone. Today, as we mourn Azu, today as we mourn Azu, I Atu, and a true Christian, because of the lost, we should also remember that he served Ghana in a very special way. I remember the days when I have to come with the black stars and the sentiment that you had. That you was somebody who was very selfless and very giving. If we talk about a philanthropic per excellence, that you was. And most people didn't realize that beyond the field of play, that you was also supporting many orphans. I have personal testimonies that, and people I know personally that that you has helped. And I pray that he so rest in peace. But please, let us not forget that Atu come from a family, and this is a very difficult time, not just for the nation, but personally for the many people whose life depended on Atu, and we need to respect that. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will all, when God calls us, will be called in a time, not a painful time like this. And the death that Atu had died has been a very tragic one. And for the nation to grieve for the past two weeks, it has not been an easy fit. Reverend, thank you so much. So you heard Reverend Kranche Ankara, who just addressed the press, and he mentioned that he had a personal relationship with the, the lost son of the soil, Lawrence Tete, sorry. So we just heard Reverend Lawrence Tete, who actually spoke to us briefly, saying that, he has personal relationship with the footballer, and uh, he believes even more so because he's from the Ga Adangbe side of the country, and he believes that uh, the media should also do well to respect uh, the, the decision for the family to go out with their rights uh, without any form of 
Uh, uh, so uh, we have the Honorable Kojo Ponkuma here, the Information Minister, who probably would share a word with us. Honorable, good evening. Good evening. Uh, so far, we've all seen this short ceremony. Government has given assurance that they will contribute their quota to give him a befitting burial. Assist the family. Assist the family, sure. So uh, what uh, do we expect from government in that regard? Well, first of all, the family, I mean, you know, in Ghana, when a person passes on, the mortal remains um, uh, belong to the family. So the family will take its decisions on when they would like to have his uh, final rites performed. Uh, they have agreed with us that they will inform the state about that. And the instructions of the president are that the state, as the vice president mentioned, should um, assist the family with all the necessary um, support that will be needed for this. Are we expecting some, if the family agree to do um, a state burial, would government go ahead to grant that? As I mentioned, the family is the one that will take the primary decision. They would inform the state and the state will make available the kind of support that is required. Honorable, and many have, owing to the many philanthropic works and uh, Machu was engaged, many have called for the passage of the community service bill um, so that it will solidify his philanthropic works. Um, what do you make of that? Um, early days yet. I think right now it's a very sad time for people all across the country, and the primary focus is to assist. I think when we are done with that, uh, whatever other matters follow can then be um, considered. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you heard from the Honorable Information Minister Koju Opong Kruma, who also shared some um, brief statements to that effect, saying that government would uh, offer every assistance that they deserve. So we have other personalities here I would love to engage briefly. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Would, would you mind to talk to uh, Briefly. Uh, please. You are with him. Okay. So uh, we have other dignitaries who are also a bit uh, engaged and they want to um, excuse us for now. But this has been the life this has been the live coverage of um, the, 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 our brothers um, uh, bringing up hello uh, welcome to city news sir thank you uh, first introduce yourself to us uh, general secretary of the Ghana football association um, so far this is a big blow to the association but to us uh, for you how would you describe it it's a solemn moment um, for the football family and indeed um, those who are very close to him, the players and uh, indeed all who have worked with him. We know him and we know and then the, his humanity. Um, I know uh, a lot of us know him for the joy he brought us on the field of play but this is someone who you would always want to talk to because he's a very jovial person always smiling always smiling somebody who doesn't take offense um, and then somebody who is always willing to help um, when people need help and i'm sure that you've heard some of their stories that's not all a lot of people will come out to say the good things he did for them. And so uh, if we are saddened by his demise, um, we have reason to. We have reason to because somebody uh, of this uh, caliber uh, who always brings people together and always is willing to share. It's not everybody who gets resources and wants to share and help people. Uh, once uh, he gets the call that somebody needs help, he provides willingly and with good act. And so um, it's, it's very rare to get said people. And so we we'll take the opportunity once again to send our condolences to the wife and the children and then the family. Uh, this is a, we know it's a big loss to them. 
and so uh, we have to continue. Uh, I must thank Ghanaians for uh, the prayers and uh, like the and prayed. But I think we would have to continue to pray for the family, and then uh, uh, together uh, we have to uh, join hands with the family and then with government and ensure that uh, uh, we send our brother home befittingly. After sending him home, is the GFA actually hoping to institute any monument in his uh, memory? Um, these decisions are ones that are taken at the uh, highest level uh, of the GFA. Uh, so we'll leave that to time. The immediate uh, 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 issue at hand uh, is to ensure that uh, uh, we, we, we comfort the family uh, and then we comfort the entire football family uh, from uh, uh, Fire North, which is now Wafa, where he played uh, Chita FC. Uh, and then indeed the entire football family, the supporters, there are many who have direct uh, relationship with him and uh, they, they are grieving. We need to offer comforting hands to them and then also to ensure that uh, uh, the, as peaceful as it was, we would go through his uh, uh, barrier as peaceful and befitting. And then when we finish, other things will follow. For now, I think that is the immediate thing. Thank you very much. So you heard the General Secretary of the Ghana Football Association, who also shared some words with the media to the effect that they would also assist the family uh, to give a befitting burial to Christian Achu and also ensure that the family is comforted in these trying moments and that uh, they will do all it can to ensure that he goes home to his maker. Uh, but one key thing I asked him was that if the GFA intends to do anything in his memory, any, uh, but, and he mentioned that at this moment that has not come to the fore, but they believe that when all the burial is done, uh, they would proceed to take that decision at the highest decision uh, making uh, body of the GFA to ensure that probably if there is anything of such in the pipeline, they would honor the legend with. This has been our live coverage of the, um, the body of Christina Chu that was brought from Turkey after the devastation that rocked the southeastern part of Turkey and Syria uh, some few weeks ago. Tomorrow actually would be two weeks exactly when the incident struck that part of the world. And uh, on record, uh, we understand the dead though has risen over 45,000 as of now. And uh, homeless and stranded. So this has basically been our life coverage of the uh, body being brought home from Turkey uh, by the family and uh, some government officials were also here to receive the body. My name is Fred Duho, bringing you the live coverage from the Kutuka International Airport Terminal 2 VIP section. Welcome back. This is still City TV, and uh, we are giving you the live coverage of the arrival and reception of the body of Christian Achu by uh, the military, as directed by the president of the land. Uh, the body arrived not too long ago at the Kotoka International Airport, and my colleague Fred Duo uh, was there, and he's still there actually, and he has been bringing us 
a minute by minute account, a play by play of everything that's happened there. The Chasam family, from which Achu comes, uh, they were there as well. The family head spoke. The vice president, His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, also spoke. You also had um, military officials doing their bit, honoring their part of uh, the ceremony and uh, fulfilling their role there. You saw the prayers done by the imam and then the priest or the chaplain. And you saw the, the body or the casket being taken into the hearse. We'll find out what will be happening, but at least the vice president um, said a few words. The biggest takeaway um, was that the, the state would be heavily involved in giving Christian Achu a proper send-off um, as the nation mourns his passing. Remember, he was um, one of the many people. And if you follow the accounts from international media or from Turkey, the death toll has gone past 40,000. One of the people who died in that episode in Turkey. A very, very serious earthquake struck Hatay in that region. And um, over 40, 42,000 people died. Actually, unfortunately, got caught up. We're all hoping that he would survive. There were reports that initially said he was found. But um, that turned out to be inaccurate. And over time, we're hoping and praying things would play out well. Unfortunately, the worst happened, and we all lost Christian Achu in that episode. My other colleague is Charles Osukumi. He's at the uh, family house of the late Christian Achu. We'll try and find out what the mood is over there and whatever or what else we can get from that particular quarter. Charles, if you can hear me, good evening. And how is the mood at the family house of the late Christian Achu? Well, Nathan, uh, once you make that turn onto the street um, where Christian Atu's mother's house is located on the, at uh, St. Peter's Adbutri, um, you find a community that is obviously grieving and mourning Christian Atu's death. Um, inside the house, it is set up like many family homes in the country when someone, is, when someone dies. Um, it is set up to receive visitors and people who have come to mourn them. Um, the whole community, I mean, you find um, neighbors clad in black and red um, crying and trying to so show their solidarity to the family. Inside, we were met by Christian Achu's brother. Um, he says he's an elder brother of Achu. His name is Emmanuel Achu. Emmanuel Ch uh, Chosam. Um, now he tells us that Achu was a beacon of their family. And even though they've been told to not to say much to the media and to others, um, he tells us that they are devastated about the death of their brother. And he says Achu is the person who has lifted this family from the ruins of poverty. Now, you know that Achu's story is one of these stories of a typical African footballer from a poor background who has been able to rise and pull his family out of poverty. So the mood in that house is quite devastating. It's very gloomy and the people look very sad. Achu's brother sought to put up a brave face and welcome us, but you could see from his demeanor, from his eyes, pain um, of someone who has lost a dear brother. Now, other people in the house, they won't talk to us, but it was quite, you know, they were just walking about doing their normal duty until the live broadcast of Achu's body arrival um, was, was, was shown on TV. And that is when we heard tears and wailing coming out of the house. Right behind me is, is the house. If you can hear, there are people still crying uncontrollably, seeing the pictures of their dear brother and son being flown from all the way Turkey into Ghana. Um, Charles, We're told that the elders of the family have gone to... All right, Charles, if, if, if you can hear me, just... Uh... Yes. A quick note, or I just want to find out something. Despite all the sadness and all of the gloom and everything in the house, did you get an indication as to what probably the next line of action 
uh, would be in terms of what the family will do now that the, the, the body has arrived? Did you get any signal as to what the, what the next thing would be um, for the family now that the body is, is in Ghana? No, they're, they're quite tight-lipped on the details. Um, they say they don't really trust um, what the media actually because of the um, reports that came out later after Achu was caught under the rubble that he had been found. So they don't really trust what the media will say. And so they've been quite tight-lipped on information, but we're told that the elders have gone to the airport to try and get the body. What would happen after that, we don't, we don't know yet. Mm. All right, Charles, thank you so, so much. We'll get back to you if there are any updates from you. Thank you so much. That was my colleague, Charles Owusukumi. He is at um, the residence of Christian Achu's mother. And uh, as you can imagine, it's really sad. It's, it's really gotten really heartbreaking. And for the members of that family, they will absolutely be devastated, just like many other Ghanaians, but they will feel the pain a bit more than many others because they knew Christian Achu personally. They were his, his family members, so they would be feeling the pain of uh, Christian Achu. Now, for somebody who does not really know who Christian Achu is and probably is hearing his name for the first time or heard his name for the first time in the last two to three weeks because of the episode in Turkey. Here's a short biography just detailing the life and times of former Black Stars winger and former Chelsea Bournemouth, Newcastle, Everton, Malaga and former Hatay Sport player Christian Achu. Here's a bit of a biography just to let you understand who he was and what he did in his life as a person and as a footballer we all enjoyed, we all loved to watch. The bad news Ghanaians dreaded broke on February 18th. Ghana's Black Stars player, Christian Achu, is no more. Just as the hammer time gives way to the heavy clouds to shed tears of rain, the initial disbelief that greeted Achu's passing has weathered away with reality. From the high and mighty 